Hello friends, this video on transport in plants part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we end our discussion on plasmolysis. Now we will talk about imbibition. So what is imbibition? It is yet another process in which, which is again a, a special form of diffusion you can say where we see that water gets transported to different objects. So it is the absorption of water by colloids or porous solids causing them to swell. Now you would have observed for many objects or objects in the sense let us suppose if you talk about wood. You would have seen that wood is very good for absorbing water with the help of the pores, tiny pores which are present on their surface. Now they absorb water and by absorbing water they get try to, they get swelled up. So this absorption of water by porous solids or by colloids is known as imbibition. This is also a special form of diffusion because here also if you take the example of wood, the water concentration in the wood was less. Water present outside is more. So water moved from higher concentration to lower concentration. So the concept is of diffusion. It is just that it is a special name given to uh, the absorption of water by porous solids. Let us take the example of a seed. Have you ever observed that if you want to uh, grow a new plant in your house, what do you do? You take a seed of that plant, put it inside the soil and you keep watering it. So what happens? That seed keep on absorbing water and by absorbing that much of water, it starts to swell up. And then that swollen seed, inside that swollen seed, the pressure developed because when more and more water keeps entering, a pressure will be developed. The pressure developed becomes too, so high that one day the seed breaks up and it gives rise to an entire plant. So this process is known as imbibition, this process of water absorption. So when you talk about, when you, if you want, you can think of examples of imbibition from your day-to-day -day life. Like we all know that almonds or raisins, they are very good for health. You have seen that if you, many people, they soak almonds in water at night and then they have it the next morning. So when you put them into water, I mean, if you take a normally a piece of almond, you will see that it is very difficult to peel it off. So if you want to peel off the skin, it is quite difficult. But if you soak it in water overnight and then next day morning you try to peel it off, it is very easy. That is because the almond has swollen up. So it has swollen up, the skin has also swollen up. That is why the skin is no more that tightly fitted on the almond and you can very easily remove it. Similar is the case with raisin. When you soak raisin for some time, it absorbs water and as a result it swells up. You talk about, as I said, the logs of wood, which has so many pores, which are visible from outside. If you put them into water, you'll see they swell up by absorbing so much of water. So this process where solids absorb water through the pores, which are present on their surface and then utilizes the energy due to that um, entrance of water. So this process of water absorption is called imbibition. So now we have discussed quite a few mechanisms in which water is transported over shorter distances. So what about the longer distances? As I mentioned before also, if we talk about a huge plant, it is not very easy to make water move to such great heights only by diffusion or only by uh, osmosis. That's because diffusion is a process which is extremely slow. So by the time water will re reach the tip of the plant, these portion of the plant will always already dry up because diffusion will take that much of time. So we need another mechanism which has to be fast and uh, so that uh, it can reach up to greater heights of the plants within appropriate time. Now we'll introduce a new term called translocation. What is translocation? It is the bulk. It is the bulk movement of substances through conducting tissues of plants. So what are the conducting tissues of plants? They are nothing but xylem and phloem. 
so here in translocation we are going to talk about movement of substances in bulk in diffusion we talked about movement of substances either as individual particle or a pair of particle moving in same direction or opposite direction like how we were talking about uniport symport and dipole right but here in translocation we'll talk about movement of substances in bulk in mass so mass flow will happen through xylem and phloem of plants now this bulk flow happens mainly due to differences in pressure so the mass of substances will move from a region of high pressure towards a region of low pressure now when you talk about mass flow or when you talk about bulk movement you can think of an example like a river in river you have so much of water and all the water particles move together in a mass it is not about the movement of an individual water molecule or two or three water molecules together the entire flow is because of the mass for example when you try to uh, you have a cold drink a glass full of cold drink in your hand and you try to drink it with the help of a straw so what happens when you take a sip mass flow of the liquid happens through the straw so they are all examples of bulk movement so now we will talk about all such techniques which enables mass flow in case of plants now when we talk about transported plants uh, we mainly need to talk about what are the things that actually need to be transported in a plants so we need to know what are the important needs of a plant without which a plant just cannot do so what are the important needs of a plant they need water and they need food so water they get it from the soil through the root hairs and food they prepare by the process of photosynthesis in their leaves now these are the two important things that need to be transported throughout the plant so water and food so for that purpose we have the conducting tissues called xylem and phloem which are collectively known as vascular bundles so they facilitate the transportation in plants so now we will talk about how exactly the transport happens in case of a xylem and how it happens in phloem so before that let us know who does what so xylem helps primarily to transport water and the dissolved minerals in it phloem helps to transport the food material from leaves to different parts of the plant so when you talk about xylem the movement of the the or the direction of transport is unidirectional that it that is it moves water from roots to all other parts of the plant so it will always move upwards whereas when the phloem transports it is transporting food from leaves to all other parts so basically it will pass it to in the downward direction as well as in the upward direction so for phloem the transport is bidirectional so let us first thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again